necessarily a little bit about Davos. The best part of Davos, to me, is the direct uh, participation. You are not just watching the leaders. You are not just listening to the speech. You are participating in the brainstorming session, and you can be a part of agenda setting for the world. So there's a good way to make uh, international relations and like to, under, to speak about leadership between the, the nations and uh, the diverse amount of people that are here, and it's a great learning experience. And there's a lot of private meetings and brainstorming sessions which are not webcast. Other things which are open to the media are webcast, so you can watch anyone. That's openness is the key for this event. And that is precisely what we're trying to uh, to do in Davos Experience in Tokyo series. So you really need to participate. If you participate, you get a lot out. Even this format is very, very suitable for the people who want to be some sort of uh, used to speak in English in public. Yeah. Please join us. Opportunities in, uh, in general, right? And uh, and uh, that was session um, uh, that was experienced in Tokyo, which is the uh, the, the big name, um, is happening for six sessions now since February, and uh, it's a project by Yoko Ishikura. She's a professor at uh, Keio Media Design in Tokyo, and uh, we are her students. And um, together with our partner Wilson Learning International, we have um, this event happening once a month here in Tokyo, and uh, always with a different topic. And uh, uh, today's is um, how do you judge the attractiveness of a region, Africa or Asia? And uh, um, this event looks like this, that we will have an um, uh, opening session by Yoko, um, which will then lead kind of in the interactive session. Groups will at some point work uh, together, will split up in groups and work um, on a task given. And at that time, we want to give a special treatment for our online viewers um, and uh, you have the chance to not only watch the due stream um, which is one-sided but also talk with us um, through a Google Hangout and uh, you should send us an email to following email address please if you're interested to join the Google Hangout send us an email to Davos Tokyo at gmail.com and then we will add you to the Google Hangout and then we can talk. Yeah, in the actually we have the Hangout uh, talk while the groups here in Tokyo they are discussing on the topic. Right. So it's a kind of parallel discussion and if um, at the end also we can present like the people from the hangout session can present in front of all the other participants here their ideas and findings right and uh, uh, without further ado I would like to uh, um, introduce basically the next part of this session and uh, you will now follow the use stream and uh, further instructions will come during the session from Yoko Sensei thank you very much and see you later today and several uh, people who are interested in what's what's going on and some of them may be taking pictures so I just wanted to make sure that uh, if you don't want to be shown in the picture uh, because of any any particular reason uh, yes. please let us know and here's the other, the one person is from Asahi Shimbun, Mr. Tonedachi over there. And Miss Tamagake, right? From, uh, what do I, let's see. International Development Journal. And so they are here to find out what, what we do here. And I invited them today. And uh, that's, so they will be, I'm hoping that they will participate as well. And we also have some uh, SEM students uh, who are, I will ask them what SEM stand for, first of all. But uh, they spent about a few months, right, uh, at KO. And they have done some project for the Japanese companies. And I invited them before, right before they leave. They're leaving pretty soon. They just finished the, the final presentation for the companies and finished the final report. And so they are free and uh, can enjoy the last uh, few days in Japan. And I really wanted them to come 
to uh, interact with you. So I would like to ask them to introduce themselves, and they will be uh, discussing or participating in the discussion with you. So first of all, uh, can somebody explain what SEMS stands for and explain a little bit about? Do we need a microphone? Um, hi, my name is Anna, and I'm Italian. Um, yeah, currently a student of the SEMS program. And SEMS is a dual master, and is basically in, uh, is focused on improving and um, expanding the global um, exposure, the international exposure. So you first have one semester in one country, and then the second semester you go to another country. So it's an association of 28 universities, and only the best university for each country gets to be part of the SEMS program. And uh, we are part of KO. Mm. Really proud of you. I'll pass the words to my colleagues. Yes, so I'm also doing this master in international management. And um, so my name is Joanna. I'm Portuguese. I come from uh, London School of Business and Economics. And uh, I also was doing a business project at KO with. Um, with the company, the Japanese companies, and it was a great experience. Hello, uh, my name is Larry. I'm Taiwanese. Uh, I'm doing my master's degree in Paris, in at HEC. Uh, now doing this term in KO, and my business project uh, company is Nomura Security, while helping them to identify uh, growth opportunities in Southeast Asia. My name is Jörg. I am German, but I do my master's degree in Denmark at the Copenhagen Business School. Um, yeah, um, the business project was a very, very good experience for us. And, uh, with the knowledge that required that time, we can help you tonight a little bit. I'm not sure if that's really, really possible, but um, it will definitely be fun to talk with you about like the experience of working actually with Japanese companies. Okay, so um, they, they, were, they work for four uh, business projects, and uh, most of them wanted to develop the strategy in certain countries or certain region. So they were expected to select the country and uh, figure out how, why you know, they selected a particular con country for the, the business expansion or whatever reasons that they wanted to do. Some of the companies wanted to just enter. And what are the, the criteria that they look at? And they uh, put together their uh, uh, recommendation. And so I thought it was very much re relevant to the topic that we're, we are dealing with today because we're trying to figure out which region to make an investment. How do we assess the attractiveness of the region, even though they, they talked about the country? And so, uh, so I thought it would be a very good opportunity. And I really wanted them to come just to have an, uh, the opportunity to interact with you. So uh, they will be, rather than them making a presentation or anything, they are going to be participating in the small group uh, with you so that you get to see them. And I've invited them to come to the, the networking event as well, and I hope that they will join us later on so that each one of you will have an opportunity to uh, interact with them and find out. And it's, it's very interesting because uh, even though they are from Europe, they are from different countries. So that's, uh, that's how I mean, diverse it is. So in that sense, I thought it would be a very good opportunity for, for us all. Okay. So today's topic is... Uh, as I, how many of you were here last uh, last time, May, May session? Okay, uh, can you tell us what the topic? How we decided to uh, on this topic? Okay, do you you want to take it over? Okay, okay, but does does it, anybody remember? Why we decided to do this? Why ASEAN or Africa? Yeah. Yes. Right. Uh huh. Yes. 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 
Yes, and Abenomics, you know, as the, the, the country, the government was very interested in making an investment, and particularly so for the infrastructure and capacity building in the regions of the great potential. And I know that Prime Minister Abe, I think he is now in ASEAN, some countries in ASEAN. So he, his interest is very much into that area. And, I, and he also, I believe, went to Africa as well. And we had TICAT uh, meeting in June. So we thought it would be a very good opportunity for us to think about ASEAN or Africa. Because these are the two areas with the great potential. And yet, we don't know that much about it. So I thought you know, that may be a very good opportunity. And I thought, rather than just the government, you know, if the company, if you are the top management or the planning, corporate planning person for the company, which region would you choose and why? And on top of that, if it's a little bit far away from your personal experience, what if you are to choose either one of the two regions for yourself, for the growth career or career planning, which area would you go? Would you go to Africa or would you, or would you go to ASEAN, any one of these ASEAN countries, Indonesia or whatever? So that's, that was the reason why I wanted to, to uh, pick up this topic. And by the way, uh, I invited several people. One of them is uh, you, because we, you came on uh, like a couple of months ago. And I thought, well, since we're going to be talking about Africa, I really have to have, have the person. Anybody from ASEAN countries? I guess not. We are, I was trying to get some representatives from ASEAN, but uh, not quite. Uh, how many of you have spent some time in any one of the ASEAN countries? Okay, that's good. What about Africa? Okay, so Africa is still sort of unknown area. So, uh, okay. And it's, it's, uh, it's good because we have at least two people from Africa who are going to be joining us. And we're, we have a little bit of trouble because uh, the telecommunication uh, status is not good, that great. But we have one person from Ethiopia, the Japanese, and another person, I'm not really sure which part he is in, but uh, he will be talking. He's a social entrepreneur, and he can uh, share his experiences with us. So uh, let's, let's just uh, take a vote. Uh, how many of you would go for ASEAN? ASEAN or Africa? How many of you would go for Africa? OK, why not, right? OK. <laughs> Let's start off with those who, are from, uh, who voted for Africa. Yeah. Can you tell us why? Uh, well, uh, simply because uh, we have a lot of resources. Mm -hmm. And the uh, power. Yes.
uh, the lack of adequate economic yeah. management mm. for a very long time. But now, when we talk about uh, considering uh, investment destination, it depends on every company's strategic orientation. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, some companies uh, are looking at short term, yes. some of them long term. I think some of our friends have captured that right. here. Um, I would also say that a lot of people are right by saying Ajahn, you know, is, has a better investment environment. Mm -hmm. They have the legal, mm -hmm. uh, the banking, mm -hmm. uh, all of that, political stability. But Africa is changing. Mm -hmm. Africa, when they say Africa is the last frontier, is Africa has all the ingredients mm -hmm. to do as well or even better than mm -hmm. Asia, I mean uh, ASEAN countries. Mm -hmm. So um, now, also, when we talk about Africa, you know, ASEAN has 10 or 11 countries. Yes. Think. Africa has 50. Right. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's not, yeah. you know, it's, Africa is not a monolith. It's not right. one country. Uh -huh. uh, there are a number of success stories in Africa. Mm -hmm. So every uh, company or investor will choose a destination mm -hmm. that will be prone to satisfy, to meet the returns that they expect. Mm -hmm. So if you look in Africa today, there are countries that are doing very well. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the recent emergence of new uh, donors and all, the landscape has been changing. Mm -hmm. Africa, for a very long time, has been the backyard of uh, Western uh, economies. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's been the uh, resource, uh, raw material source, you know, yes. to supply in mm -hmm. Western industries and all. But with China, India, Brazil and all, I think the playing field is being leveled. Mm -hmm. It's now for Africa to bring the proper policy regime mm -hmm. to implement economic development mm -hmm. for its people. And I believe mm -hmm. companies that look long term uh, can focus in Africa mm -hmm. and uh, with very good returns. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks. Uh, why don't we do this? Uh, let's see. I, we, we have, have several. I would like you to break up into, into the small groups so that many more people will get a chance to talk. And this whole place, the objective of this session is for everybody to speak up and to have an experience of you know, speaking up, arguing back and forth, leading the discussion, report back and so forth, rather than just sit down and listen. So that's the whole purpose. So uh, I would like you to de be divided into several groups. And the choice is as follows. You can divide. Uh, I was going to do like African group and ASEAN group. But it, it's going to be too many ASEAN groups, <laughs> too few Africa. And I would like uh, us to come back and do the debate on the big scale at the end when we come back. So. We could we could just do you know three or four ASEAN groups and two African groups, or we could try to divide it into half and ask some of you who voted for ASEAN to go to Africa and argue for Africa, as he sort of suggested earlier on. Because we may not know enough about Africa. So how do you promote this region? And I think that's very clear that not, not too many of us know enough about Africa. You know, how many people knew there are more than 50 countries, right? Can you, can you name all of these? I mean, that's, that's the kind of thing. So I think you, we may be able to do this exercise of how do you promote the, per, uh, the, the country or the region that you may not know that much about it. So does that uh, sound OK? So if that's the case, let's, uh, let's just uh, 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 please raise your hand if you voted for Africa. So these people, why don't you, let's uh, split into two at least. So you can just move over there. And uh, yeah. And make sure that you argue, you know, you are supposed to be developing a sales pitch for Africa, okay? So you have to convince the other party or the audience that the Africa is the place to go. And ASEAN people, yeah, you have to move uh, you have to move with the chair. Yeah. Yeah. Is it okay? Thank you. 
Okay. So among the assembled people, who would be willing to switch your position, your view, and go for Africa? Anybody? Oh, I okay. Go by the way. Okay. And go to that the third table. And the rest, please break up into the other three groups or so and argue for ASEAN. Yeah, let's let's basically start now. We are free to talk. Um, what what Yoko Sensei did was basically she she was asking the audience, so uh, which which region did you vote for, right? Was it ASEAN or was it Africa? So, Benny and Keita, what was what was your vote? Benny, go first. Africa. Africa. And okay. Keita? Africa. Africa. Oh. <laughs> but I, 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 want, I wanted to keep it flat. Um, I wanted to listen oh. to everyone first. And then, and then after listening to everyone, uh, yeah, uh, was, uh, right now. Right. So the, um, you are quite different from the audience we had and from the online audience. Um, online, 31 people voted and 77% uh, was voting for ASEAN. And, uh, and uh, here in the room it was similar. Uh, most people actually, actually preferred the ASEAN region. So I'm surprised that you both said Africa. Yeah. Uh, and uh, all right. So like, uh, then uh, I'm. I, I would recommend that that we just join the conversation. Yep. And uh, so, Tina, what is what is your what is your word? Uh, if I need to choose between, like, you have to choose. Boris. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Can we, uh, can we make sure we all know which sort of, uh, uh, standpoint or like where, where, what kind of investor we are? Hey, Maybe we can decide among ourselves. Let, let, let's, let's, let's just hear, uh, for the moment, I, I want to get there, definitely, but let's just hear like, uh, what is, what is somehow the, the, the region you tend to? Oh, okay. If actually I want to invest in, um, it depends on what industry I want to invest in. If it's infrastructure, I would most probably go for Africa, just because of the business opportunities there are okay. more. So also, just a moment, hold it. And 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 I would say now ASEAN, all right. So now we have the now we have the votes as a starting point. We have uh, we have three people saying Africa is rather the first choice, and one person saying ASEAN. You want to say it depends, right? Yeah. All right. So go ahead. And, but I just so, wanted to keep that for a moment. So, and if I want to quickly have a return on my investment, then I would select the Asian, Asian region. A faster return on investment. Yes. Okay. yes. Mm -hmm. So it depends. Maybe we should decide on our perspective, whether it will be like short right. term or long term. And so if it's like a uh, short-term investment, I would invest in Asian. If it's long-term, maybe Africa. Okay. Uh, can you repeat what you said before? You, 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 you had a concern, right? Can you, can you just say again what you, what you said before? Um, oh, yeah, um, well, uh, so... I mean, as Tina mentioned, it, like where you want to invest really depends on where you stand, right? As an investor, mm. like which industry you are in, with what country you are in, you know, what level you are in. Um, is it is it corporate or is it more personal? And I just wanted to know what everyone, where everyone was at, so we can have some more context for, for the answers. Right. Right. It seemed that, that, that uh, in the conversation that Yoko had, it was also just left open, basically. Very general question. But like, uh, the, I like that what you said, Tina, is short or long term. Then you talk different, yeah. differently it about it, right? the perspective and the industry as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, Definitely Africa will be, if, if it's infrastructure, any kind of infrastructure, the investment would, 
my investment will go to Africa. Just because of the... Actually... Um, what do you mean with infrastructure investment? Roads, uh, telecommunications, mm. uh, electricity, like grid, ev everything that mm. is related to infrastructure. Yep. Just because like, I've read that, um, yes, the growth of uh, China is slowing down. And the growth of the region, like uh, Southeastern Asia, will be uh, will depend on the growth of the Asian con ASEAN countries. But Africa is expected to be the economic miracle for the next, like, in the next 50 years. Next 50. Years. Yes. So, so therefore. It, um, there, like, obviously, the perceptions about Africa are changing. Yeah. The continent as a whole is changing as well, changing in terms of political stability and economic uh, growth. But still, it's growing. Like, not, so, well, it's starting from very, starting to grow from very like, low level, mm -hmm. and they will need these years to really grow and expand. And they will be the driving force in the next 50 years. Be Benny? Benny? Hello? Yeah. Hello? That, could you, could you um, explain a bit why you said Africa? And, uh, and uh, what was your background to answer this question? <laughs> the reason why I chose Africa. Right. Yeah. I have met a girl from Africa who is very interested in Japan, Japan. Mm -hmm. and then at that time, for the very first time, I knew that the African people are very interested in Japanese culture, such as magazines, dramas, and so on. Dramas? Mm. So, uh, at that time, I knew that we would be good friends with each other. So, for me, Africa is more familiar. Right, because you met yeah. the person, right? Mm. Uh, in person. Mm. Yeah, that's why. Mm. Have, you, have you met, have you met uh, people from the ASEAN region? Uh, sure, I did. But, you know, but I moved more. I was moved more, more from this to African contact. See someone from Africa because mm. we are different one another. Right, right. So that was very that was very interesting, right? That conversation was probably very interesting. It's a totally yeah. different communication style. Yeah, right? we have something similar and all something similar and different. We have one more guest here. Two. Yeah. Oh my god. Stuff that was Tokyo, Tom. Kazuho, were you dead right now? What's going on? <laughs> the, um, the, the, who? So like, okay, the like, uh, um, B Benny, that, that's very nice what you said. I mean, that's, that's, that's of course um, one very good perspective on the topic, yeah, right? Yeah, a cultural exchange, actually, looking from Asia, uh, from uh, Japan to uh, Africa, it's an exo exotic country with exotic, exotic. Right. But interesting culture, and the other way around is also true. So, yeah, I I, I haven't actually thought about cultural products, but maybe this is also one yeah. thought p possible for, for just because of the Asian con uh, Asian countries they already know or have more information about the Japanese culture. After all, it's all about personal relationships, right? Yes. And I think that one point that you just had, like that you that you feel somehow similar with uh, a lot of the other Asian uh, areas, but at the same time, those are very different. Then, like I think the the kind of uh, 
it can be a, a mixed feeling, right? Mm. Somehow you feel a bit similarities because it's an Asian background, but then it's so different. So then you then you probably don't understand the the, the differences when you when you have somebody from Africa uh, who is who is to be totally different than you. It's yeah, black and white, right? It's yeah. a total difference. So and then you look. Uh, then all the similarities, and they are a nice surprise, right? Yeah. Uh. It's a. Di what, what do you? What did you feel? Can I, yeah, yeah, Keda, yeah. All right. Uh, no, I just wanted to ask, like, uh, so I mean, we we found that you know, Japan is desired quite a bit by the sort of the African population, right, or the African people. Mm. How can that be? beneficial in terms of investing there. What, what, what do you, which part of Japanese products, which part was most desired? Uh, I really, I really like to know. Mm. And, you know, where, the, where is the opportunity to feel? Just from talking, I mean, individually. Yeah. Which part was desired the most? Benny, Benny, can you, can you answer that question? Education. Oh, I see. Mm. Schools. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because okay. there are too many children who cannot edu cannot be educated enough because of the money. Okay. So, so Japanese, Japan, Japanese education was desired? Or education in general? Or? Uh, for younger, like younger than like you, uh, universities, college students, high school students. Because, you know, in Japan, uh, the population of the children getting less and less. And birth, I mean, birth rate is declining. Hmm. So the schools, they don't find enough students, right? So that's why mm. we can find more opportunities in Africa. Educating so all those young people we, there. Yeah. Mm. If only we can change in English. Mm. Okay. I see. The export of education. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. right. But I was thinking so almost, like, you know, you know, like a like a BOT version of Kumo. <laughs> What, yeah. did, what did you say? <laughs> that is a good example. That is, a, you know. Keda, can you? Ja Japanese, uh, do you know the uh, Kumon? Is a Japanese. Yeah, Kumon. Kumon. Uh, uh, yes, um, so Boris. Yeah. Yeah. Kumon is a Japanese. It's an easy uh, and simple way to start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's good for the study. Yeah. It's sort of a cram, you know the Japanese cram school course? Yeah, 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 yeah. So they, they, they brought that method, and the, the Kumon also has a method. They, they, built, they built a very uh, unique method for education, and they, they, they have they opened a lot of uh, uh, sort of cram schools around Japan, and this method was accepted around the world as well in more of uh, uh, affluent countries and more developed countries. And now that, you know, looking, in Africa, maybe there's an opportunity for these types of services to be very relevant and, uh, in, in a more BOP context. Though. How would you how would you touch the opportunity um, comparing Africa and ASEAN region for exporting education? See, um, there, there is a, uh, to my, this is just my you know personal view. Yeah. I think there is a huge gap between the, the level of education in Africa and the level of education in ASEAN. Mm. Afri ASEAN is quite established, in my perspective. Mm. Africa, I mean, most most people, uh, this is just my perception. Again, you know, um, one, of the, one of the participants said that there's a lot of myths about Africa. This might be a myth, but my perception is that, um, you know, there is still, it's still very poor and most of the population are not able to access even you know the most basic educational services. Right. And, and this is this is already you know an untapped area, untapped market, which um, which Japanese perhaps Japanese educational you know schools or services can can come in and, and 
I, I think like this this un, untapped untappedness is so uh, attractive. Yeah, but on the other side, if we like, our question was, um, how would you judge the attractiveness of a region in terms of investment? Right. But education is usually considered a public service, which kind of implies that it requires a lot of money to invest without like any uh, measurable result. Like, you know, right, and like who, who is paying for, yes, for actually, the education, right? When we talk about like education, educate, I, I'm totally for education, <laughs> but uh, in terms of investment, I would like, um, as an investor, I would not actually think about establishing a school. In how, how, do you, how do you think about a social business, investing in a social business? Yeah, I mean, oh, there are zero returns, but you know that you, you are able to make a, a very strong income because education is basically one of the basic elements. Of the If we talk about life. education, I would say like yeah, social business or aid, like financial aid, like focus the focus of the financial aid. Companies in Japan will invest in that social business. Do you think? I would. I think that companies investing in other industries in Africa can also, like, um, indirectly invest in education, just because because the uh, population there is presumably has lower education. They will need training, like specific training, so that they can occupy their uh, jobs in the companies. In, Japanese right, companies so this, is, this is sort of a so, very interesting topic for me because you know investment usually incurs that you want to return. If you yeah. talk about investment, you also, also always talk about return. You have yes, always this measure of return on investment. What if, what if you know that you get social returns and you know that you you can impact in terms of political stability? For example, if everyone's educated, then there can be a better, more stable. Uh, yeah, but like then a, then it will not be like a real inter enterprise. It will be a not a real enterprise. enterprise. Just, okay, it will be a social enterprise, but it implies that you take someone else's money and put them in this economy, but you don't uh, wait for a return, or you do not finance your enterprise like um, with a local uh, funds. I, I actually don't have much experience with social enterprises, but usually this is uh, this is this is my perception that you it, it's a kind of like brutally said it's a kind of charity from the well richer countries to the poorer countries. No. It's, how do you find well, the, 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 the well? Like, so, 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 social social enterprise. That is that is uh, operating like a like a business, right? Want to be very productive and want to have a lot of. Can you give an specific a lot of, example? They they measure their uh, success not in uh, return on investment but in impact okay. that they have, right? Okay, but, but they they wanna they, they wanna to uh, they wanna operate very sustainable okay. in order to do that for a long time. Okay. And uh, therefore, they will be very smart business wise with the resources. And how they operate, right? Do you have any specific business in mind? Like Just the like the like the microfinance started kind of from a social entrepreneurship perspective, and then uh, turned into a billion-dollar business. This is the most famous example always given, right? So, like. <laughs> Benny, Benny, how 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 is your definition of of social enterprise? Um, if you if you if you want to comment, maybe, can, can you maybe share um, what you think about investment? Uh -huh. Just a moment. For for you, is, do you invest for money or do you invest to really make an impact? So, I mean, it's both. It goes both ways. But if you had to choose, yeah, I'm. I'm. 
considering not only children but the mothers. <laughs> mothers. Uh, I would like to women, more women, to be independent economically, and then. So I think mothers need more job training to raise their children. If the children have no fathers for some reasons. So we discussed younger children before, but we ha I think we should talk about a little bit about mothers raise the children. So I would like to, you know, yeah, it might, you know, I would like to make the poor country right. is appropriate country, like Japan. Nobody happy country. No you know, happy country. Extra, right. uh, like where the basics are provided, right? Where everybody basically can have a stable life. Yeah, stable life, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where nobody has and to fight too much, yeah. Okay. So so would you, you would would you approach this through a sort of a social business? Or charity? Or you know, if it, is it a is it a public policy social and government thing? So, okay. so, yeah. Because you, know, you know I have to make money for myself, yeah. right? Yes. You know? I'm not throwing my money away to Africa. Right. I never meant that. But then, like, if you decide to make a social business, you might uh, get the income that is enough for you, um, and at the same time have more impact than if you if you give money away for a short time, right? If you can do that for many many years and even generations and build something that is much yeah. bigger than you, then yeah. your social business can have impact. Mm. Uh, in the sense of business, yeah, because if poor country has more opportunities to go in, uh, go there, you know, ASEAN, much more people mm. focus on studying something there, but few, only a few would choose Africa. So in, like, Have you ever heard of the word of blue ocean strategy? Yeah. 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 That's why I would like to try Africa rather than okay. mm. the, the question is just why why don't other people see the opportunity, right? Um, that makes you wonder uh, is it actually not possible, or uh, many people surely have tried before, right? Again, uh, uh, I, for me, uh, like this goes back to the myth that uh, the, Af the African gentleman mentioned. We, I think, one of the biggest throw-offs in terms of Africa is, is corruption and political volatility, right? Yeah. So, without spinning, without changing this perception, I mean, people aren't going to realize. I mean, only a, a select few are going to, uh, people who actually go there and, and you know, act will, will only realize to me. That's just my perspective. Mm. Yeah. Actually, um, I can, can I share, uh, like, um, you know, Denisa mentioned um, the, the ladies, um, you know, women should, should also be able to work in these in this situations. And, um, Okay. Yes, and um, a great example is, I mean, Boris mentioned microfinance, but uh, the same Grameen um, organization also has the Grameen Denon partnership. Have you ever heard of it? Grameen Denon. No. Grameen. Can, you, can you write it also so, in the so, chat? Can you explain? Can you write uh, it? Sure. Uh, Grameen, so, uh, so we just talked about microfinance, right? Yeah. And um, this is... This was basically created by the Grameen Association, which is Al uh, Mohammed Yunus, quite famous Nobel laureate. Yeah. Um, so he, it, his uh, organization is now working with Danon, 
Do you know Danone? Yeah. They, they French, Danone. Uh, Danone. It's Danone. The French yogurt maker. You know, yeah. the yogurt yeah. maker. Yogurt maker. Okay. Danone. Right? Like, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and um, what they are doing is they're basically, they basically built a social business in Bangladesh. This is in Africa. They make made a social business in Bangladesh where they uh, where their goal is to basically eradicate malnutrition for young kids. Right? So they make very cheap <laughs> very cheap um, yogurt for, for these kids. So that they can they can afford it. Or their parents can afford it and then these kids can be nutritious. And what one other thing that they did was the, the sales people are, are called Grameen Dunnell ladies. And um, this is sort of similar to the to the ladies who maybe Benny Sam knows, but uh, you know the Yakuruto Yakuruto ladies? <laughs> yeah, the, the ladies who come and, and sell the sell the, the Yakult drinks in, in Japanese companies. Um, it's it's sort of the same idea where where women who did it who were jobless are now able to to make money some money from selling this yogurt. It's very cheap yogurt. And this sort of creates this cycle. But right? but is there something like your cult ladies in Japan? Yeah, that's right. Really? Yes, of course. That's it. <laughs> so they actually they actually got to know this idea from from Japan. That, that uh, but like it, it's sort of a, um, I mean, it, it's a great way to um, sell because you know you can't you don't have you know, it's basically word of mouth. You need you need to sell people, uh, sort of sales people to, to sell this. But but the point is that this social business basically operates around the whole social situation, right? And, and it, it's done, so, so basically the, the company invests heavily, quite heavily, with, with little, without, you know, um, knowing that they won't get a return. But they invest so that they can create a cycle, a business cycle, uh, a very strong supply chain um, with the, with the given social situation. Mm. Poor young, uh, poor young, or you know, poor women who can't work, give them a job, and then make them sell uh, uh, yogurt to bound it on the kids. Right. And th what this does is basically creates a cycle that um, leverages the whole community, and that's their goal. Like that's that's why Grameen is is. Um, investing in this business because they know that if they can leverage this community then they have an opportunity to come in to the market and I, they have a head start in the I, I, I want to i want to I, I think it's amazing that we exchange this kind of uh, uh, social business ideas and uh, i would like to also uh, uh, propose one more yeah like uh, the, there's something that is now being established more and more in the us uh, around the tech scene it's like Many people want to learn like coding these days, right? So they are like coding schools who teach you for free, and then uh, they they gonna earn by uh, landing you a job in the industry afterwards. So they they teach you coaching, and then they are like uh, taking the agent fee. They teach for free, and then. Uh, Uh, you get an uh, excellent uh, like coding education for like uh, two months in the summer or something and after those two months they kind of made you ready for for working in a web company okay and uh, and uh, so I, I what, what I propose is just send send instructors down to Africa and uh, and just educate thousands of people in being developers and then sell them to companies but <laughs> No, in, in both, in I'm saying now something really provocative, yeah. but no. like uh -huh. coding slaves, right? Yeah. No. What? I, listening to you, actually, I realized that you still talk about business ideas and a specific business model, which mm. is not a kind of charity, and it, which also um, right. is concerned about the return on investment. Mm. The example of the non in Bangladesh. Actually, I I can see it as a long-term investment from from Danone. The, yes, they start as a social enterprise. Now they create jobs, but also this is actually investment in their in their image. 
in the image. Uh. In the image, just because like the image, and I mean they, they, they know that they want to create a like monetary. Yes, they they, later on. they know that the country country is in a region which is growing uh, fast, and they expect that they will have their return. If not exactly now, right now, it will be like in ten years probably. Just because the, right right now I see there's an investment in their image, just because they give jobs to uh, unemployed people now, they feed their children, and in ten years this will be their market, and it will be a very strong association between the non-brand and yogurt. And uh, not not not, it's like uh, it's it's CSR activity not towards the market here but towards the future market. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and so do you feel, I mean, that you're absolutely correct. Knowing that, do you feel Africa is a good place to invest? For these kinds of types of companies? Because, I mean, you know, most of the things that you said can be applied to current African Could, right? Yeah. yeah. But I would actually, uh, I think that well, creating such um, investing in an um, underdeveloped country uh, is a kind of challenge for the for the investor, just because they need to come up either with a new product or a new business model to make their enterprise successful in the less developed country. So it's for me, it's a kind of challenge. Like, I, I yeah, think there's one, one challenge is actually how to get started. And uh, when you, w there are not, not many um, from Africa uh, who, who make it to study, for example, around us. There are few, right? A few who we meet in university or some, somebody, right? Those are actually potential people who you could team up with and start something, right? But like, uh, um, the, you, you need, somehow need uh, to have the trust level, right? I have a trust in somebody who studies with me, for example. But, but um, I, I would not go in a, and randomly meet with somebody in Africa uh, and start talking about potential social business potential, right? I just that. I, 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 would, I don't know if I could build the trust level. Um, but you can go to right. Africa on a trip. Right, I would meet there, people, right? Spend there one, two, three people. months, meet people right. there and yeah, then mm. create like... In right. We just don't get in touch enough when we're here, right? Yeah. We have to go down there to meet people, right? And to build relationships. So. Well, in our terms, like, you need to make your field study in, in uh. the field. Very uh. uh. Yeah. Would you would you do business with your African friend? Or, or, or yes. Yes. business or just yeah. a friend? No, not just a friend. Okay. Mm. What kind of uh, sort of characteristics do do, do you find? Um, okay. you know, African African people, African culture as for people. They are so nice. Admire Japanese people. Uh, that's a great contribution brought by Japanese animation or art. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, if African people didn't like Japan, the friendship between Japan and Africa will never work well. But so far, my friends from Africa really like Japan. So in that relationship, I found some possibility that we can do something. In my, it's probably up to the Japanese, right? It's probably yeah, up to the Japanese, Japanese if they can share the uh, sympathy my the other way. Right. Call, calls me Adegoha in Japanese. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, that makes me feel more friendly. And then I think it's 
easier to find a way to make some partnership in business too. Because, yeah. I can trust them. But not totally, but to the level of the. Of but small business for the first. Yes. Yeah, because it's too risky to do something big, as you do know. What's up, I go. Hmm. Have, have you traveled to Africa, Keita? No. You? No, I haven't. No, no. never been there. You have been to the ASEAN region, right? But yes. It's, it's like, it, I, I feel you cannot even compare those two areas too much. Yeah, that's you, a good idea. You can. I would like to listen to you, Keita. Hmm? About ASEAN countries. How I felt about ASEAN countries. Mm, how did you find? Oh, when I went there. Those countries, yeah. When you went there. Um, uh, I think that, uh, I, well, well, of course, the people, I mean, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, uh, education is quite already established um, in most Asian countries, not all, of course, not all, of course, but there, uh, it's, there's a lot of infrastructure already created. So, um, what I found was that people are more affluent. They're more rich than I than I expected. What more I rich? Yeah. yeah. Mm. I, maybe you, you you haven't you haven't been to the poorer parts of ASEAN region. Yeah, of course, of course. Like Mu uh, Myanmar, or Cam Cambodia. I went to Malaysia, Indonesia, and Singapore. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, Singapore is quite rich. I mean, everyone's educated. It's there's a lot of foreign investment already, so I mean, it's sort of already quite an established um, area. Um, but again, like I, the, the the people there are you know, well educated. Um, they have more money than you would expect. So, and, and I mean, I would definitely do business with them. Of course, I would love to do business with them. Um, with with the as a sort of a, as a partner, perhaps maybe invest in Africa. <laughs> But I don't know, I just... Also, actually, this makes me think that it, it's very difficult to say, um, to, to, to think about Africa as only one country. If you think about, like, the Northern Africa, it's predominantly Muslim, and the culture there is totally different than the culture of the sub-Saharan region yeah. and in the Asian ASEAN, region too, right? Yes. ASEAN is much closer to, to Japanese culture, for sure. There are, there are differences, but it's, there's a lot of a lot of um, commonalities. There, there are some. I just wanted to point out there are some Muslim regions in ASEAN too, right? Yes, yeah, so that's true. That's true. But also, when when we talk about money, the other question is whether cultural differences or religion are relevant. When it comes to money. When it comes to money, yeah. <laughs> yeah like the Mus the, the, there's one thing that Muslims don't take okay. the interest, right? Okay, they, they don't <laughs> eat like... Uh, they don't, no interest, no interest. Like the, the Muslim investment banking, uh -huh. There is no interest rate. I have no interest rate, okay. Oh. Yeah, so... This, this is quite a different approach to this. Yeah, for example. <laughs> but... Uh, I don't know, like, it's it just... What I, what I feel is like the... Um, the stereotype. Um, as, as somebody comes from a very different background when it comes to how much somebody had, right, growing up. And then you talk about business and you talk in money terms like we know in Japan. 
then it's just a whole other world and then probably that might get over the head quite quite fast with with thousand thousand bucks you can do quite a lot in Africa I think and uh, and uh, so the I say some somebody I don't know like once money is involved it can get very complicated I guess dealing with locals yeah, yeah but we you can always like find the, the right locals with the Kukuri. right locals yeah. I just wonder where you find them but another question is if you like uh, if you as a person would uh, relocate to a ASEAN or Africa mm -hmm. which destination would you choose uh. <laughs> so, good question. South Africa. That's, that's, South a, very, that's a very personal. <laughs> that's a very personal. You know, on a personal basis, how but that would affect my life, right? Consider, yeah, consider yeah, it a like in personal investment. If you can actually, right? if you can uh, forget about any liabilities, for example, that you have presently. And you're totally free to move somewhere, and you have like two options: ASEAN or Africa. Which one would you choose? And why? Penny, same question to you. And to you, Boris. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> would, I would. <laughs> I would take it easy and choose South Africa, right? <laughs> that seems like a. South Africa. Yeah. That's a that's, that's a well, probably one of the countries right. which is uh, which stands out a bit. Mm. They have like very severe political problems. It's the northern south, uh, totally different. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, it's not Italy. It's like Tunisia or Egypt or Morocco. The food is just like in Italy. Uh, more Arab, Arab, Arab style. Arab countries, definitely Arab countries. Mm. Italy is not far, but uh, yeah, it's it's close, but it's Christian. But no, it's a it's a Christian background in yeah. Italy, Catholic, and the Muslim countries are very different alone. From, from, for that reason. Mm. But still, I think ASEAN is more competitive and then too competitive, too many investors. Mm. Mm. I would feel much too overwhelmed with the cultural challenges in Africa. In, a, in Africa? Probably. But you so like, I'd rather yeah. take the competitiveness uh -huh. than uh, all the cultural yeah. challenges that I have here. Okay, let's assume that uh, this is the international conference called, uh, not Davos, but uh, something else. And we have, at one point, if you recall, Asia and Africa are sort of considered, perceived at the, 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 the same level. And uh, for some reason, Asia has grown very much compared to Africa. So there's quite a bit of distance between the two regions today. But Africa is coming up now. And Asia, you know, we may have a little bit more... Uh, the, the growth rate may slow down a little bit. So I think it's, it's a very good opportunity for us to reflect back and uh, the two regions and figure out if you are talking to the kids who would have a future as to which region would be more attractive. How would you, so there will be a this is going to be broadcast and you streamed to all the, the high schools in the world. 
and the high school kids will know, will, uh, will listen to, and will watch which region that they would like to spend some time on or put the energy on. So if we assume that's the case, what would you say to, to promote the region that you have discussed? Let's start off with ASEAN. This is ASEAN, right? So can somebody start off? Yeah, OK. to first identify who we are, then to see if this must suit us. And then we, talk, we, we try to talk about two dimensions to see which market is more attractive and which market actually Japanese company has the edge to compete with other players. Okay. So we consider, first of all, regarding market attractiveness, we think ASEAN is more attractive because in Africa there are some more risks involved and people do admit that Japanese companies are not a risk lower. They like less risk. So going to ASEAN, you have less political risk, it has less economical risk, and the market size is much large, larger in terms of population or even in terms of disposal income. So it's easier to get in touch with those sophisticated uh, customers and also business partners. Um, and also, so far in China, uh, in Africa, already a big player, China, from there. So it's pretty hard to differentiate from China as an Asian player. However, if we look at the competitive advantage side, we consider that Japanese actually have an edge in ASEAN market. First of all, um, if, if from governmental relationship or from like business to business relationship, that Japanese already have strong footprint in Southeast Asia. So it's easier to to establish the brand, establish the awareness, and also you know the local market. So you be able to conduct more effective market strategy. And also, that's a good way to hatch the weakness of Japanese company, which is um, a bit slow decision-making process. And so when you enter the market, I understand more. It's easier. And second of all, is, is, is the, the culture gap is, is much narrower. So you know the culture in South Asia, and then those people, many of them, they actually speak Japanese, and they know Japan. So it's a natural bound. So, it's pretty good for internal communication. And third one is geographic advantage because these two markets are much closer, so you can conduct much more face-to-face -face communication that enhance to build out strong relationships. And also in terms of logistics, if you want to do something where high logistic demands, it's much less risky in Southeast Asia. That's our idea. Okay. Any other additions? Yeah. Yeah. From myself? From the same group? Yeah. Another group? Or? Okay. Yeah. Um, we identified some factors. So mm -hmm. basically it depends what sector you're in. Okay. If it's a capital intensive, labor intensive, yeah. if it's IT or manufacturing. Then we identified if it's a long term or a short term strategy. Mm -hmm. What kind of um, advantage you're looking for and yeah. when you're looking for this. And then also the home country. The culture and um, the the seat, like how they do business, mm. might influence as well what kind of uh, the country they will mm. go for. And also, um, as we said, there are so many countries in Africa and so many in ASEAN. So I think it depends first which one you tackle first, which one you tack, uh, mm. you you go to first. Mm. But we identified like uh, population, for example, it's true that Africa is 15, 50 nations. 50 countries, but um, ASEAN has uh, larger populations in terms mm. of numbers. And uh, so the characteristic of the population is also important depending on what kind of uh, sector you're in. Mm. So if it's like, um, it's long life expectancy, mm. low uh, fertility rate, like, so also the composition of the population. Yeah. We also looked at the actual cultural, political, the uh, uh, economic forecasts are also mm. very important. Like uh, many of the ASEAN countries are believed to be the most um, promising in mm. the next future. And ethnic co uh, conflicts, for example, in Africa, mm. while they're not really longer here in, uh, in 
Indonesia. Yeah. And also the first mover advantage, we think that um, most of the time it represents a really advantage, but mm. sometimes it's good to learn from others' mistakes. Mm. So you should maybe let other <laughs> companies go and investigate first. Um, also the climate in Africa and the health situation may represent a risk. And for the pros, uh, the customer sophistication we think is also very important for okay. us. So, okay. So it seems like you're much more focused on the comparison. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And relatively, mm -hmm. SAM is uh, easier or more advantageous. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Go ahead. Um, let me add a few points. First yeah. About the consuming market. Yes. Um, it is true that you know uh, Africa's population growth is higher than ASEAN countries. Yes. I that. But concerning about the consumer. Uh, expenditure growth. Uh, this is um, introduced by IMF, and uh, ASEAN is 205 percent from 2012 to 2020. Mm. On the other hand, Africa 185 percent. So this means that even though lots of babies are born in Africa, yes. you know, you know um, consuming power, um, consuming the consuming power, ASEAN has much merit. Okay. So this is the first point about the consuming market. Yes. And the second point is the merit of um, production base. Uh, as I mentioned earlier a bit, um, concerning about tax uh, EPAs, Japan has already um, signed an EPA with all the ASEAN countries. Mm -hmm. So um, you can choose any countries in a sense. Then you can export, like for Thailand to Indonesia or Indonesia to Malaysia, all you know, the tax term is, is quite uh, low, so you can you can you know um, build the ex in exact countries, and you can you know um, get those tax merits. And uh, about concerning about the tax treaty too. I mean, if you want to um, send the money from subsidiary in local companies to Japan, yes. if you don't have uh, if Japan doesn't have tax treaty with those countries, you, know, that, mm. um, you will have double taxation. And uh, concerning the tax treaty, Japan has tax treaty with seven countries in ASEAN. But concerning the Africa, only two countries, Japan has tax treaty. So concerning the tax merits, um, definitely it is better to choose ASEAN as a production base. Okay. These are the points. So it's very much fact based, and it's much more from the corporate uh, with the lots of lots of details. Okay, let's go to the Africa. Who wants to? Okay, go ahead. You got to convince the high school kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I think uh, you know there are many facts uh, which which show uh, the attractiveness of the uh, ASEAN countries. But much more essentially, uh, if we think of the base of the pyramid layer, uh, so there are many many uh, essential needs for water, for electricity, etc., etc. So therefore. I think uh, there is a uh, much more potential uh, in Africa than uh, ASEAN countries. Mm -hmm. But it takes time. It takes time. However, mm -hmm. as as long as there are many many essential needs, mm -hmm. uh, so there should be a business chance. Uh, at the same time, uh, we really want to solve the social issues mm -hmm. uh, at the same time. So, um, and we we refer to an article that okay. Uh, there is a family uh, who earns just uh, six thousand US dollar uh, for the annual income, mm -hmm. right? very uh, representative of the uh, base of the pyramid. Yes. Uh, and uh, there is no gas, no electricity at home. Mm -hmm. However, they are using a uh, cell phone mm -hmm. to, to check the uh, check the price of crops and also the vegetables yes. because they they grow plants and vegetables and then they sell it. In market, mm -hmm. so therefore they really need to check the price mm -hmm. uh, over the close in vegetable and crops. Yeah. So therefore, I think uh, there should be a uh, opportunity uh, to access to um, the base of pyramid layer, and also at the same time, uh, regarding population, um, in, in my data point, uh, I, I learned that there is a one one billion population. In Africa, whereas uh, 700 million in ASEAN country, mm -hmm. so 300 million 
uh, more population mm -hmm. than Asian countries. So um, from a um, consumer market point of view, uh, there is a huge opportunity. Mm -hmm. And also uh, from a um, source of labor perspective, so we can utilize those yes. population to do their own business for their own country, mm -hmm. right? So I think, and also we can expect uh, the support from the government. So <coughs> very intuitive, but uh, <laughs> there is a much uh, there is a very huge huge opportunity. Okay. Anybody else? So uh, for our African team, we discussed about the investment, uh, which might be good for us to which region is good, like Africa or Asia, and we support Africa because uh, when we think about the investment, maybe we can uh, say like short time investment and long time investment and high return and low return. So we first uh, confirm our positioning where we are now. And Africa is, mm, sorry to say, but uh, it's long time mm. return, mm. but maybe high return. Mm. And for European, uh, US is very short time, short time returning back, but uh, not really high. And maybe Southeast Asia region is like between mm. Africa and the, our US and European mm. country. So we thought that it is all about the marketing. It is fun. And when we do marketing, maybe we have to think about where to invest. Mm. So uh, we didn't. Uh, uh, see the all the regions, mm. only the countries mm. picking up. And when we pick up the countries, we first seek out the uh, case which is succeed. Mm. And South Africa is the most uh, famous case mm. which is success in Africa. But when we look out uh, look other countries. Also Botswana, mm. I didn't know that, but Botswana is successful now, it's well. Mm. And Kenya, Nigeria, um, and Ethiopia mm. is also coming up and successful. So uh, we second do the, uh, what is the success factor is, mm. and what is the risk is. And success factor is about economic management mm. and also the political management kind of social framework making. So, uh, if we invest in Africa, mm. maybe uh, uh, we, because we support Africa, we want to uh, make Africa rise up. Mm. And in order to make social framework uh, better, like Southeast Asia, maybe Africa, Africa can learn from Southeast Asia mm. about the, all the things like good infrastructure and also the um, uh, democracy. Mm. But this is maybe far behind, so it's easier to think about the economic framework like banking, global finance things. So. Um, Maybe uh, comparing Southeast Asia, it's a uh, long-term investing, mm. but we support Africa because uh, we have already success study case of South Africa, and also we look at the potential of resources. For example, Congo has 25% uh, of minerals. Mm all over the world. Mm -hmm. And because of that, maybe the war happens, but still, it's uh, risk and op opportunity is always together mm -hmm. that we would like to take the opportunity of it. So we would like to uh, think about investment through the business. Mm -hmm. 
So for this point, we support Africa. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, Sorry. Uh, Sissi, thank you very much. Um, I would just like to say first that uh, the continent that is the birthplace of humanity in mm. Africa is a vibrant and wealthy place. Now, we do not say do not go to Africa or don't go to Asia. In terms of company objective, I think uh, the gentleman there had placed it very well. Uh, the basis of this discussion, the premises of our uh, debate here, is that we are a Japanese company mm -hmm. and we are considering which region we have to choose. Yeah. Naturally, there are short-term and long-term objectives. Mm -hmm. In short-term, if you want to have the highest, quickest returns, mm -hmm. actions will be our recommendation. Mm -hmm. But companies plan long-term, mm -hmm. and Africa mm -hmm. is the destination. Mm -hmm. I think if you look at data, if you look at the fact that uh, there is a scramble for Africa now, mm. you have China, Brazil, mm. India, all other countries, Malaysia and all, going to Africa. It's not because they will reap returns in the next five years. Mm. It's investing in the long-term future mm. of their own mm. economies. And we believe there is a strategic need for Japan to be in that frame. Mm. Now, Japanese companies, Africa has needs everything from infrastructure, water, electricity, mm. and Japan has a lot to offer. Mm. A point that, in my opinion, um, I think since you started by saying Asia and Africa started from the same low base, mm -hmm. but Asia has done well. Mm. Why Africa has not done mm. well? That's why in my earlier intervention I said we should not lump some Africa as a whole. Mm. Because if you look in Africa, mm. there are a number of success cases. Mm. South Africa is a very special case. There are a number of cases, like we mentioned, mm. Botswana. Mm. For the last 30 years, it's been a stable economy. It's a middle income mm. economy today. Now, I mean, there are a few of them that are following, but the most prominent is mm. Botswana. Mm. If you take that within that chaos in Africa, there are some countries that have done well, mm. and they have the same political, social, cultural environment. Mm. That means others can do well. Mm. Now, there is uh, usually recently the debate about transferability mm. of lessons from Asia to Africa. Mm -hmm. Now, they started from the same low base, mm. but they've done well. In my opinion, or in a lot of literature as we've mm. seen, they have gotten their economic management right. Mm. It's not that they've not made mistakes, they have, but they've gotten them right, and Africa can do the same as well. Mm. We have at least a few examples, the Botswana, mm. the Ethiopians that are going. Now, mm. if you're thinking long term, because there are these potential for success, mm. Africa should be part of your investment for portfolio, mm. and that is a very strong, I mean, there is a lot we can discuss about mm. here, but I would say that uh, looking at Africa as a destination, I think is a very wise investment decision for a company that looks after. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, so, yeah, go ahead. Well, um, along with the former comment, basically uh, the economy is shrinking and, and the business is becoming more global. Mm. So we, we have to do business everywhere. Mm. Uh, on the ground. Mm -hmm. To do so, we have to have a, a presence in any part of the world. Mm -hmm. Africa is a place we have to go anyway. Mm -hmm. If we go there, mm -hmm. when should we go? Before we go, um, if you go to Africa, mm -hmm. you can always, on your way home or on your way back, transit, stay in Asia. Mm -hmm. But if you choose to go to Asia, mm. you never see Africa. Mm, I see. Africa also is in, the, in a good location to go to Europe mm. and South America. Mm. So it should be a strategic location mm. you can't miss. Mm. Okay. Okay. So, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I want to add uh, what we shared. Uh, in terms of uh, short-term profit, 
I think uh, the economic state of Asian countries are nearer to mm. ones in mm. Japan mm. in 1970s and mm. 1980s. Mm. So in short term, I think we can share uh, not only big things mm. like uh, hard assets, like mm. we can build uh, factories mm. and uh, stadiums, but we can also share the uh, soft assets like mm. mindset, mm -hmm. mentality, and how to manage mm. our employees. Mm. So mm, that's why uh, I think um, there is much possibility, much okay. more possibilities. Okay. Anybody else? Go ahead. One thing. One, yeah. one thing, you know, uh, maybe this will be biased. Yes. Yeah. Um, in Africa, Japan does not have the historical baggage that they have with mm. Asia. I see. So I can tell you, there is a lot of respect for the Japanese way, mm. there's a lot of respect for the success Japan has had, mm. and a lot of people are looking at Japan mm. to emulate the same. Mm. But I can yes. guarantee you won't have people breaking your shops because of, uh, you know, the mm. historical package is not mm. there. Okay. Yeah, so that's something to think about. But we already have uh, the successful models mm. uh, in Asian countries, mm. not like Sony in Thailand, mm. Mm, like that. So. We can, not just, but uh, we can follow uh, mm. that mm, history. Yeah. Mm. But history, I think it seems like it, it can mm -hmm. work both ways. Mm. So it can, you can learn and you, you can just point to the successful Japanese company, Nassan. But at the same time, when it comes to the, the bigger picture of history overall, Africa may be much more receptive to overall mm. And so that's that's something to think about, probably. Anything else? It almost sounds like for the long term, Africa offers a whole lot. So if we're talking to the high school kids, probably you <laughs> might want to appeal to those because you know if we're talking to the Japanese business people, probably it's much easier decision for them to go to ASEAN because they don't want to be a long term. But since it depends on sectors as well. Uh -huh. yeah. It depends on sectors. Yeah. There are sectors today yeah. that you can go to Africa and make money today, mm. have returns. Agriculture, mm. Africa is land. There are a lot of, I think you've seen it in the news, mm. companies going and the land grab of Africa. Mm. So uh, the potential is there. Mm -hmm. So depending on sectors, right. there are sectors that are a little bit more long term. Mm -hmm. If you are in an industry that is very high tech, yeah. it's very difficult because the reason to support infrastructure mm -hmm. to receive this mm -hmm. kind of uh, industry. But African governments mm -hmm. are building up. I mm -hmm. think it's a, it's a process. It mm -hmm. takes time mm -hmm. to do all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so depending on sectors, mm -hmm. some of them need to go now. Right. But I will join my, my friend here when he said, we have to go to Africa, but when will we go? I think mm. your time is now. Mm. Whether you're looking at long term, <laughs> whether you're looking at long term yeah. or short term. Yeah. Short term, some sectors will give you the returns you want. Mm. Long term, mm. there is a learning process that is important mm. for you to establish your business in the country. Mm -hmm. And now is the time to go because mm. the scramble is such that if you go, in fact, it's already quite late. Mm. <laughs> I know Japanese uh, um, people, mm. Japanese companies have been latecomers before, mm. so they have the experience. Right. They can do it. But yeah. uh, now I think the world has become multipolar. Right. Uh, the, the stakes are high. Yes. And it may be a little bit more tougher than mm. it used to be. Yeah. I think you know, the first uh, person uh, mentioned that the market attractiveness as well as the edge and I think the edge part is very much related to what are the, the competition and whether we are essentially talking about the, uh, the sort of open market but open market usually is not really well established that's why it's open and if it's you know, good infrastructure and so forth and uh, then that means you're, you're talking about the very tough competition at the same time. So which one do you want to choose? How do you assess your own strength and the edge kind of things, it seems like. And I, and I think it's, uh, we, we sort of talk about, you know, it 
depends upon the sector, depends upon the country as well. Because we can't just, you know, lump everything together and say ASEAN or Africa. It all depends upon the sector as well. But at the same time, as I think as you mentioned, it almost is imperative, imperative that we have to be everywhere. We have to be every possible growing market. We can't really afford not to enter or not to have an operation in certain areas. And so the question is, is that the choice or is that is not exactly the choice? And there are, there are several sort of factors, you know, do we choose the regions or do we select the countries? Because we can't be everywhere, even though we would like to have an operation. So that's the kind of thing that we may want to think about. Let me ask you this. Would you go to those who said, Asia, would you go to, would you be willing to work like, you know, if you are asked by the company, by your company or by whoever, to go to ASEAN countries, like uh, next month, would you do it? Same thing was true with the Africa. You may say, okay, Africa has a lot to offer, but would you go? I think that's the question that we really would like to ask. We can usually talk about, okay, is this better, this is more attractive, this is much more potential, this is the competition is tougher, but, I mean, we are the ones who have to do it. So, would, do you, would, how, how many of you would be willing to go to ASEAN or Africa, either one? Okay. What, what do you look for? Um, dancing and music. Okay. <laughs>
to me, she looks so motivated to mm. study. I see. So I found some great potential to teach her mm. if we could teach in Africa mm. rather than in Asian countries. Okay. Right? And then uh, Boris told me that 77% of the lessons from this session mm -hmm. go to ASEAN countries. Yes. So, um, I think there would be more uh, possibilities and mm -hmm. opportunities to win the chance. Uh, when you have a chance in the education field. I see, I see. Okay. Because Tinka told me that ASEAN, in ASEAN countries, education system is almost established. I see, I see. On the other hand, hmm. in Africa, the most of the ch children is hmm. too poor to be educated. Mm. So, but I learned from a survey session, I should consider more about money to return. Mm. Because we are talking about business, yes. not just charity. Mm. That is the <clears throat> most important point <throat> that we can never ignore. I see. So for the money purposes, do you go for Africa? Do you still go for Africa or do you switch to ASEAN? Stay Africa. Okay. Why? Because less because it's less competitive. I see, I see. So you still have much more blue ocean and more potential. Sorry? If you see more potential and not too many people are interested. So that's a very good combination. Yes, okay. that's right. Okay, sounds good. That's it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's all right. Okay, thank you very much. I think, I think it's a really good thing to actually ask that question on. Is it really the case that there's less competition in Africa? <laughs> What do you think? Let me share with you the, uh, some of the comments that I got from uh, people in Africa. And uh, how can I, is this, oh. Would this one go on? I need to have a projector on. Yura-san. Can you help me with this? I would like to show some of the comments that I got from the people in Africa. And I've connected this, so this should work, right? Today's background, Japanese government and private sectors both are looking for regions, countries to make an investment. Two regions of interest, Africa and ASEAN, the choice for investment. That was the, uh, the, the, the original question. And we have a couple of comments from Egypt, from the person who spent some time in Egypt, and he's still there, and also from another person from Ethiopia. And coming from Africa, mainly, I mean, like, it's uh, more of uh, Egypt, Africa. The two major things is that economic, expanding population, access to Arabian Peninsula and European continent, which I don't think too many people talked about. And not too many uh, multinational corporations. I think this is in relative uh, uh, terms. Geopolitical, because we can secure Suez Canal, and that's another reason. And But concerns, politically not stable, particularly like Egypt. The president, uh, prime minister who came to TCAT, is no longer prime minister there. So that's what we mean by, you know, not stable. 
So he says, we don't know what's going to happen, like a month later. And he said, we had an Arab spring, but are we getting into Arab winter? <laughs> and, but the, <clears throat> he mentioned that there are several facts which are not that well known about Africa. More than 50 countries, and Africa, in Africa, not only black people, but also Arab. So that's something you need to remember. And politically, very diverse. So some countries are very democratic, others are authoritarian, some of them are transitional, which is sort of transition in transition. And there are some failed states, clearly. And Chinese economy is playing a significant role. So if you want to go there, you might as well think about you know, what's taking place every single day. And this is the, the, the blog that he writes. And so if you want to take a look at what's going on from a person who is actually in Egypt, so this is what, uh, what you could take a look. And from Ethiopia, this is from the, uh, the Samejima san, who stored at Andu Ahmed. That's a luxury brand. And uh, uh, she, she won the High Spirits Award at uh, uh, Women Entrepreneur Business Competition at DBJ the other day. And he started uh, this business, luxury brand, uh, bags and things using the sheepskin from, uh, from Ethiopia two years ago. And according to her, the sheepskin in Ethiopia is the best in the world. And, but, but sales has been growing, and he is, her business has attracted a lot of media attention because it's, it's a sort of interesting, unique combination of luxury brand and Africa, which a lot of people think it's very much undeveloped. And uh, why? He said, uh, she says it's a blue ocean, as we talked about. It's such an unexplored area. And she said the only two companies from Japan are in Ethiopia is Mitsubishi and Andu Amet, which is her company. And uh, another reason why she has been, her business has been successful is raw materials of best quality and yet, it's not very well known or available in Japan. So that's, a, that's the strength. Um, the comments from Africa, the concerns is, <clears throat> she says it's, a, it's lack of infrastructure, as a lot of people think about. However, as I think you mentioned, there are some good, you know, successful cases, and some countries are very stable. So if we are talking about 50 plus countries, some of them are very failed states, but some are very politically stable. So it depends upon where, which country you, you go for. So this is the Andu um website. And so uh, it seems like it's, it's very interesting. Those, I mean, naturally, uh, the, the people who are in Africa vote for Africa. But, and we haven't had anybody from ASEAN. So, but overall, it seems like generally you have much more positive impression or you see more attractiveness in ASEAN, partly because it's closer, you, it's more developed, you, you have a feel for the country and so forth. So that's, that's what for today. And, uh, I really wanted you to think about uh, whether the question itself is the right one. Do we need to choose as we talked about? And it's in the global competition, but the competition is boundaryless. So do we have to choose between the two? But at the same time, we have the, the, the fact of resources, our resources are limited. So even though we would like to be everywhere, it's almost impossible. So we need to choose. We need to make some kind of choice. But do we make a choice between the regions? Or do we make a choice 
in terms of the countries or how. And uh, another thing which I thought was quite interesting is that if we know, if we have more information, it's we tend to choose these places because we know a little bit more about that. And uh, we, we have more people who have spent some time in ASEAN, but none from Africa. And those from uh, uh, who, who live in Africa have a little more different perspective. And as, uh, as our friend, President Expert is. So it may, you may think that we live, uh, um, Africa has a high risk, but it may have high return. So those are the kinds of things, but it's very difficult for us to find out what they are. So let me talk a little bit about uh, the upcoming Davos sessions. Uh, the dates are, this, the next one is September the 6th, and the, uh, the rest of the year is October the 11th, November the 8th, and December the 13th. What we would like to do for September the 6th is as follows. We discussed in June, can Japan change? And at the networking event, uh, quite a few people said, rather than just discuss can Japan change, as if we are not a part of it, let's figure out what we need to do to change Japan. And because it's as we sort of talked about, we cannot go on. We have to change somewhat. So what should we do so that we can just go on from discussion to some action? So individually, what are the kind of things we could do? What are the kind of things that we could do as our company, the company that you work for? What are the kind of things that we could do as a government? and any other organization, probably schools, NGOs, and so forth. So those are the kinds of things that we would like to discuss. And I think it's, uh, in a way, it's uh, quite interesting because we are much more focusing on actions rather than just discussion. So that's what we would like to do. And uh, any comments since it's already 9.10? I would like to close up. Yeah. Um, I just want to make a comment about sure. uh, the survey, yeah. 77 and right, right, yes. yeah. um, Just a question to uh, my friends on the 77%, mm -hmm. where do you get your news from? Mm. I suspect it will be from BBC, CNN, TNBC. Mm. Now, if you be bombarded, the only news that comes from Africa is farming disease, their civil war. Mm -hmm. And if you have that mm -hmm. for generations, yes. that's why I said I'm not surprised because that's what lingers. Mm -hmm. As I say, you put a point. If you have the right information, mm -hmm. you'll be able to make a much more informed decision. Mm -hmm. So I would invite you, if you have an opportunity, to visit Africa. Because Africa is really contagious. A lot of people go to Africa and fall in love. There are, I will be, it will be disingenuous for me to say there aren't problems in Africa. There are. We have a lot of problems. And that's why we need investment. But we do not have the control of our, the content of information and message that's going out of Africa is not controlled by us. We are making an effort, and uh, the start is by inviting you. If you have an opportunity, come to Africa and experience. I hope you'll, you'll change your mind. Okay. That's great. That's Thank very you. nice. And I think, you know, when, uh, when it comes to the Japanese media, they don't really report that much about Africa. They, they report quite a bit about ASEAN, and right now it's much more so. It's amazing. You know, Prime Minister Abe is in ASEAN countries, or Myanmar, and so forth. But Africa, you, you hear so little. And uh, even, uh, I think the U.S. media the same way. You really don't hear too much about Africa. But if you listen to BBC, European media, they have much more information about Africa. And so that's, those, those are the kinds of things that really shape your perception. 
And uh, so I really would like, and Al Jazeera, for example, they do have the English uh, notes. So I would really like you to, uh, like to encourage you to get exposed to a lot of different kinds of media. And when in fact, uh, I think that's the, the subject that we're going to be talking uh, the day after tomorrow at a different uh, occasion. But uh, that's, that's uh, it's very, very important what kind of information sources you have. Uh, because you, uh, you are, uh, that shapes your perception. And if, and it's, it's very true, that means that you have the role to play, to portray the, the, the present status of Japan to the rest of the world, in a way. And I think that's what we try to do in uh, last, last month, by answering the question of can Japan change. If you say, no, no, it's not going to be able to change, then that forms the perception of the rest of the world. If you are, if you're Japanese and here, and you, if you think Japan is not going to be able to change, who would believe that Japan would change? And I think that's part of the reason why I really would like to take this, uh, the next session to be much more action-oriented rather than just uh, discussion. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, used to speak in English in public. Yeah, please join us.